Hey, what's up? Hello, it's Katie Colson here, back at it again with a weekly reading vlog. Welcome to the most common camera angle on my channel, which is the kitchen cabinet. We all know it, we all love it. If you ever wanted to know what's in this kitchen cabinet, you're actually resting upon garlic and red onion. Do I keep it inside a, a cabinet? Yeah, why? I don't know why, why do I do that? Who cares? Hello. Anyway, um, let's talk about what we're going to be doing in this weekly reading vlog. We're going to be reading quite a bit of, okay, there's quite a few um, not great books, but then there are some that really shine through. It's like, it's hit or miss. It's like black and white. There's no gray. It's like either I'm like five stars or I'm like, why did I read this? Terrible. I hope you have fun. And um, without further ado, Let's jump right into it. Hi, um, this is the beginning of a weekly reading vlog. We are beginning it on Sunday because today is actually my company's holiday party, which you might be like, Katie, what holiday could your company possibly be celebrating at the end of May, beginning of June? Oh, that's hilarious. I bet you can understand that COVID has stopped us from having a holiday party for the last two years. And then also we were supposed to have our holiday party at the end of December, but then somebody gave COVID to the entire staff. So well, listen, it wasn't my fault. Okay, I got COVID and I'm a Gemini, I'm a talker. When I didn't know that I had COVID, I unwittingly gave it to everybody right before Christmas. Sorry, it's the restaurant industry, okay? You know, I was but a lamb for sacrifice. Okay, so that happened, and then we were supposed to have it again, like, two months ago, I think. And then this other girl unwittingly gave the staff COVID. I didn't get it that time, but anyway. Um, now we are having it today and I'm literally like, how, how much you want to bet? Like now, because I think like two or th three different people at the restaurant have COVID right now. So now I'm like, how much you want to bet we're going to have this holiday party and then the restaurant's going to close because we all get COVID. Why are we starting out on a downer? I mean, technically, listen, it won't even be that much of a downer for me because... I kind of just don't want to even go in right now. But anyway, um, what are we supposed to be talking about? Oh yeah, it's the holiday party at my job. So we're going to be getting cute and drinking. But for some reason, I woke up at 7 a.m. today, which is crazy for me. Like I usually wake up at like noon. So that doesn't bode well because the party doesn't start until like 7. Well, it technically starts at 6, but like, you know, we aren't going to show up until like 7. Um, that's a long time from now. I'm going to be big tie tie, okay? And that means I'll probably not be able to hold my liquor as well. So we're going to need to bear that in mind, okay? Well, I'm just talking to myself at this point. Anyway, um, I want to go and get a toffee nut latte from Starbucks because I have not gone to Starbucks like all week or this whole last, uh, yeah, not at all this whole last week. What? But let's talk about the books I'm reading. I am 31% of the way through the Hacienda. I'm on page 106. I'm listening to this and w I'm not sure what I think. I'm going to do about this book because while I do think it's written well and it's like good, I guess I'm having a really hard time like caring. And I think it's just, maybe I'm not really interested in like reading a book like this right now. It's kind of like a haunted ish, not haunted. I don't know. There's like something going on. I don't, I don't really understand. I am not even going to tell you what it's about because honestly, I don't feel like I'll do a good job of it. I don't know if I'm going to continue reading this right now because I'm just, I'm just not really caring. It's not exciting. But I am also reading Notes on an Execution by Danya Kakovka, and this is for my Smut Salon book club pick for the month of May. And I am barely into it. I've read a little bit of it at work. I'm on page 18. Um, this is about a guy that is on death row for murder. I think that like he did or is at least like thought to have killed these girls but you're not like really focusing on him you're focusing on the women in his life that have been affected by him so you're following a i haven't gotten to these parts yet right now i'm only really following like him but um 
this is like starting at 12 hours before he is executed. So you're following this detective who grew up with him. And then you're also following his wife's twin sister and his mother. I believe you're following his mother as well. But you're following the women that have been affected by him and seeing whether or not, like based on like Cindy for, on BookTube, Cindy said that this is really a look at like, um, whether or not he could be redeemed and like whether or not the death penalty is even effective to um, redemption or even bringing uh, solid or bringing um, peace, peace of mind, justice, yeah, to the people that have been affected by a crime. So I am excited about this. I've heard a lot of really amazing things. There's actually a girl that I work with, like our media marketer of the restaurant industry that I, or the restaurant company that I work for, um, recently read this book and gave it five stars. And I was like, wow, really? Okay, damn. And she listened to the audiobook and said it was really good. So I was like, okay, I might, um, well, I bought the audiobook. So I've been reading it physically, but she said that a really good way to do it is to listen to the audiobook and follow along with the physical book. And I was like, say less, Layla, say less. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to try and start listening to it while I drive to Starbucks and get myself a talking that latte. And then, oh yeah, I have a video that is going to be premiering a week, another weekly reading vlog that's going to be premiering at 1030. I need to get groceries. I need to submit my renter's insurance. I need to make an Instagram post. I need to do my dishes. I need to put away my laundry. I need to put away like three bouts of laundry. I need to do my laundry. Listen, I would say we need to get our shit together, but like it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. Okay. Anyway, um, let's go and do the damn thing because I clearly haven't had coffee yet today. Hi. So nothing of what I have said before in this video ended up coming to fruition. Okay. So I told you I was going to go to my company's holiday party. No, no, I did not do that because Grace like decided that she didn't want to go. And I just was like, I don't want to go without her because we always go together. And like, I was just like, if I go, Without her, I'm just going to be thinking the entire time that I wish she was there. So I didn't go and I decided to do reading sprints, which I am currently doing right now. I'm doing them with um, Aaron, Kayla, and Bree, and we are going on like hour six. Um, but Bree and I are Geminis and like, I swear we never shut the fuck up. We never shut up. I'm like, we'll be on pause for like a solid hour. I'm not even kidding. But I did finish... The Hacienda, I was listening to this all day, by Isabella Canas. Canis? I'm sorry, I'm not um, pronouncing that pro properly. Um, this is a book where I feel like I'm not in the right headspace to really enjoy this, even though I know, like, clerically, like, I know that this is a good book. I definitely think that if you like uh, Mexican Gothic, you will like this. It's, like, Mexican Gothic, but more haunted. Like, way more haunting. And then I feel like you even get way more cultural representation, like of Hispanic representation, um, like Bruja, like witches and stuff in this, which I know you did get it in Mexican Gothic, but it was a little bit more focused on like the eerie 
atmosphere of the house where this is focusing on like the witchcraft it is focusing on like culture it is i don't know it's good it's very kind of gothic and creepy but i kind of want to give it three and a half stars part of me says i shouldn't rate it because i wasn't in the right headspace but i want to give it three and a half stars because there was it, it wasn't necessarily for me like even if it had been an absolutely fantastic book i wouldn't give it five stars but then also there's like a romance in this book that I not only didn't really feel like was necessary, but was distracting. And for some reason, kind of skeeved me out. Like, I, part of me was like, is this supposed to feel forbidden? Because I'm not getting those vibes, which could have been hot and great. Am I supposed to be like, oh my God, this is so cute? Because I don't. Um, and then also I did not like the ending. Even though the ending makes sense, the ending makes sense, it is unsatisfying. I was not satisfied, not even a little bit, by this ending. And I get it, this ending is what probably would really happen. But I don't want that, I don't want reality. I want escapism. Anyway, probably gonna give that three and a half stars. And then I have been reading Notes on an Execution by Danya Kakafka while in the reading sprints. And I'm like a hundred and something, 900 pages? No, I'm 94 pages into it and I'm really liking it. Like so many people were telling me that they love this book and they thought I would really like it. And y'all are right. This is really good so far. It's really good writing. I'm really enjoying it. I'm only struggling a tiny bit on what all characters I need to be paying attention to. And I asked about Zaffy and I was like, oh, well, she's not somebody that's mentioned the summary. I don't need to pay attention to her, right? And everybody on these reading spins are like, no, you need, you need to pay attention to her, to her. So I was like, oh shit. Okay. But I'm enjoying it so far. I was not expecting this um, storyline with the prison guard. I was like, oh my God, are we going to have a breakout? Is this going to be prison break? Like, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I am really, really intrigued with this book. I've put two tabs on it so far. Like, there's definitely more things I could tab, but like, I'm not, you know, going through this, like necessarily trying to tab it. Those are just moments that I, I really loved. So put tabs on those. I'm very intrigued to figure out what's going to happen in this book. And also earlier, I went by the liquor store and got a bunch of shit because I was going to be wasted at the holiday party anyway. So I might as well get fucking lit at my own house and the safety of my home and not have to pay for an Uber. Anyway, I'm going to go back to reading this book and making my Duchess letters for my Patreon and sprinting with the girlies. Hi, it is the next day. It is Monday. I didn't hit you up last night. Um, I forgot to set my alarm today. So I didn't go to sleep like super late. It wasn't super late. Um, but I woke up at 1 p.m. because I forgot to set my alarm. So I woke up at 7 a.m. yesterday, I woke up at 1 p.m. today. We're doing great. Um, I just got to page 214 on notes on an execution. And I put, in, you know, quite a few tabs, but Listen, if you have this book and you want to go to page 214, or if you don't, doesn't matter. Um, if you don't have the book, I just got to the part where you figure out why Ansel is so interested. Or not why, but like, you know, the connection between the blue house and Ansel. And I'm like, I kind of want to go to the back to the beginning of the book. Because I feel like, I don't feel like I've missed anything. But I feel like I need to go back. And now I'm understanding why. There was a girl on, on the reading sprints yesterday that was like, I think you're going to love the book. Read it. And if you don't get it, read it again. And we were laughing about it. And now I'm like, no, I get it. I get what she's saying. Like, I do kind of want to go back to the beginning. But then I'm like, do I go back to the beginning now? Or do I finish the book and then go back to the beginning? Maybe I should do, maybe I should do that. Just me spiraling.
So clearly I have decided to continue reading it. And then uh, I already know I'm going to go back and fucking read it again immediately because one, <sighs> this will, will be five stars. This will be five stars. I don't care that I still have another hundred pages. I don't give a shit. It will be five stars. This is so fucking good. It's so well written. Oh my God. Has this author written anything else? Because it's stunning. It's stunning. Like she packs so much beauty, so much like action in such few words like it feels like I'm listening to the book for so long and then I'll go back and I've only read three pages because so much happens like it's so beautiful it's so stunning oh my god but let me tell you how dare how dare this author this author making me making me tear the fuck up for this serial killer okay because I'm like, damn, this is so true. Okay, so he's talking to the chaplain, um, like, before he is set to be executed. And this line, um, it should matter. The distance between your desire and your actions. It should matter that you wanted to love Ginny. Or at least to learn how. Like, okay, there's a lot of quotes from him saying that he doesn't want to be this person. He didn't want to be this way and that he tried not to be this way. And he was like, he's like, I want to know right from wrong. Like, I want to not, I want to understand these emotions. Like, I, I want to, I just, I just am not built that way. That's not how my brain works. And he's like, it should matter that I wanted to do the right thing. It should matter that I wanted to be a good person. And that I'm capable of being a good person. If someone would, would show me how, like the times that people showed me how, I was a good person. And I'm like, God, that is so fucking true. That's so true. Like no one recognized this neurodivergence in him. Nobody recognized that he was a sociopath and like helped him be a better person. And I'm like, God damn it. Two things can be true is what I'm saying. I don't, I'm feeling things reading this book. I will finish it today. And I will restart it today. I guarantee it. Hey vlog, it is Tuesday. Listen, I'm doing such a good job of updating you. Such a good job. Like, <laughs> but are you not entertained? So, um, it is 2.30 p.m. on Tuesday. And not only did I finish this book, I do not remember if I told you that. No, I did not. Not, okay, listen, not only did I not hit you up yesterday when I finished this book, but I have also read it again, cover to cover. Forgot to tell you when I started it, forgot to talk about the journey, forgot to tell you that I ended the book. Finished it twice, forgot to tell you. Anyway, hi, hello, let's talk about some chaotic energy. I bet my blood sugar is low. Let me have some more of this absolutely sugary syrup. Okay, notes on execution, five, mother 
motherfucking stars. Five motherfucking stars. Also, she a baddie. She a baddie, damn ya. Damn ya, more like, damn ya, fine. I just came up with that. I swear to God, that was not pre-made material. That was spur of the moment. <laughs> Pick up lines. Okay. Also, she's only written one other book, and it was in 2017. And I was like, what? Did you write it when you were seven years old? Like, I'm confused. This book is a masterpiece. This book is a masterpiece. It's fucking fantastic. It's so good. And I tabbed it the second time around, and I went through taking out tabs, and this is still as many as I have. Now, let me tell you, OCD does not love deckled edges. Like, I like deckled edges, but not when I annotate, because it makes making the tabs all the same height so freaking difficult and it's so annoying but like I, I mean I don't know I didn't do too bad of a job now I hate it gives me so much stress trying to figure out my tabbing system I wanted them all to be purple but then it just got obnoxious like there were so many so tentatively what I've done is I have purple is for like thought provoking like things that made me really question things and the main thing is I really have purple tabs mainly for the death penalty and like thoughts on the death penalty and then I have green is mainly for writing or just beautiful things and then orange is like plot and other I guess it's, we're doing great and then blue is for sad this book is fucking sad. This book is fucking sad. It's sad. Okay, let me read you. Let me read you something. Let me find something I want to read you. Okay, I'm going to read you this quote because it's not spoilery. So, this is how beautiful her writing is. Grief was a hole, a portal to nothing. Grief was a walk so long she forgot her own legs. It was a shock of blinding sun, a burst of remembering, sandals on pavement, a sleepy backseat, nails painted on the bathroom floor. Grief was a loneliness that felt like a planet. Bro. It's stunning, stunning, stunning. I love that the author did not really try to push you necessarily in any direction when it came to like your ideas of these characters. Like, especially Ansel, the guy that's on death row. Like, the first time I read it, I did find myself like feeling bad for him. And then the second time I read it, I was like, wait, pull it back a little bit, Katie. Pull it back. What? Like, no. But oh my God, like, she does it so well. She does it so well because that's the reason that I'm saying that she doesn't push you in any direction is because you're focused on the women that he has affected and the women feel differently about him. Like all of them feel differently. Like the mom, the sis, like the wife's sister, um, the detective, like the whole thing. It's just, I'm not making any goddamn sense right now. I'm really not making any goddamn sense, but this book is stunning and I will be genuinely shocked if things surpass this to be in my top five of the year. Like, I really feel like this will be in my top five. This book is fucking flawless. I actually gifted the audiobook to Grace so that she would join me for the live show on Patreon because I was like, I need you to read this. And she said, she was like, this has got to be a book where we do not talk to each other at all. Like before going to the live show because I kept going on and on. She was like, she was like, Shh. stop talking. And I was like, got it. I love it and I love the cover. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going on and on. And then I didn't pick up another book. I finished that one like a couple hours ago. Um, and I was just sitting there reading it, like flipping through like, oh my God, oh my God. And I was highlighting and I was, I'm talking about it again. I was highlighting in pink. It looks so good. And I was like, could not flip a page without highlighting in it. It's just fucking stunning. It's a beautiful. Anyway. Hi. Hello. Um, I haven't picked up another book yet. I was just talking to my dad on the phone and we don't talk to each other like that often. So when we do, got to make it count. But I went by my freaking P.O. box and I had some packages. And listen, I want to be the person. I've been struggling with this. I want to be the person that can do unboxing videos. I want to do a birthday unboxing so bad. One, because it would be a lot of fun. Two, y'all love that shit. Three, it always gets like a freaking bajillion views. And I love that for my channel. I want that for me. But I cannot, I do not have the patience. I do not have the willpower, the strength, the mental fortitude to do it. I just can't. I can't. 
And part of me is like, maybe I should just like compile all of the clips into one giant unboxing. And that may end up, what happens? You know, listen, if that's what's gonna happen, that's not what's gonna fucking happen. Let's just do this, okay. Oh, I don't know what this, I don't know what this is. So I don't know how to open it. I'm cutting something, very sorry. Like, shut up! <laughs> it's a Starbucks gift card! Oh my god! Oh, bitch, you fucking know! Stop! You know that shit is expensive! Who said this? Is there not a note? I swear to God! Oh, there is! Enjoy your gift from Amy Flood. That's a dope name for starters. Amy, thank you so fucking much. Like, you know Starbucks is, like, hella expensive. And it's, like, kind of my new obsession. And the only reason I got dunked in today was because I was like, bitch, stop. But then I, bitch, the bitch did not stop. So, there is that. Amy, thank you so much. And then we have a little box. Well, it's actually not little at all, but let's just see who has gifted me with what I presume is a book. Why is this so much unlike on my blood sugar slow? I don't know. Make it make sense. This says, hello. It, oh, oh my God. Okay. Michaela just messaged me on Patreon and was like, hey, I sent you a book, but it didn't um, like send a note or something. I wanted to like let you know it was me. And I told her that I hadn't received the second book she was talking about because I had already received one of the other ones. Um, but I'm so excited for this because the cover is fucking stunning. Okay. Um, Michaela from the check from, it says Czechia on here. I'm not really sure if, I don't know if that, I don't know about that. This book was just translated. So you will be one of the first English readers. What? Have a good read from Michaela. Do not. Oh. She put her Instagram handle. I went, do not read this out loud. This is a chunk. Oh my God, this is stunning. How has Kayla not read this book? Oh my God. Wait, is she going to read this for? I Shall Awaken. I've, ne I've never heard of this. Clearly it's just been tra translated. But oh my God, this is giving. This is serving. This is giving. This is serving. Serving looks. Serving hand feel. Like this is a brick and it just feels so freaking good in my hands. Let's just read the back. Okay. In a remote borderland. Why did I say that so weird? In a remote borderland village where everyone still lives by their own rules and believes in old gods, four children disappear without a trace. 12 years later, during a summer solstice, three of them return out of nowhere with no memory of what happened. What? Astrid. Oh, I love that name. Stop. Astrid, Tom, Sonia must unite to overcome the prejudiced villagers discover what went wrong and locate the fourth missing child, Astrid's brother, Max. 12 nights after the winter solstice, when the border between the human world and the underworld is at its thinnest, is the most dangerous time of the year. And the kids, now adults, will soon discover what the ghosts from their nightmares are, what that the ghosts from their nightmares are real and waiting for them. Wait, I knew there was gonna be something under the dust jacket, but I didn't know it was the same fucking cover. That is sickening. What? Okay, you just went full print, didn't you, boo boo? Okay. It is a lot of words. Love to see that, though. This is a lot of words. Let's see how long these chapters are. I swear to God, if they're if they're too long, I'm gonna have to wait for the audiobook because the girl's attention span is mighty low. Good. God, these chapters are long. I'm still going, boo. Baby. Honey pie. Why are you still writing? You should be breaking. Take a breath. I can't make this shit up. I can't make this shit up. I'm still going. This is, this is one chapter. It is 70 to 124. Can I do math? That's fi like 55 pages. For what? For why? But I am very intrigued. This is fucking stunning. Michaela, you fucking knocked it out of the park. Like, haven't ready. Oh my god, there's moths on it. This this is literally my brand. I better give this book a first. 
if I don't give this five stars, there is no literary God. This is but a prank. I need to stop talking because I've been talking for so long. Michaela, thank you so much. You're a sweetheart. Love you. Gonna go message you and be like, I'm so sorry that I made you worried that it didn't arrive because it just did. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm hoping that, I don't think I mentioned this, but I ordered plates from Ikea and I'm hoping that they will arrive today because they've been delayed. I don't know what I'm gonna pick up next. What book am I gonna pick up next? I don't know. I'm probably gonna do reading sprints because it's Tuesday. I need to get something to eat. I'm gonna stop talking because I'm literally acting like a fucking crazy person right now. Hey, hello. I got a notification that a package of books that I purchased for myself, I know, this is like gonna be the first time where I know it's from me. Like I'm not like, oh shit, is this a book I bought for myself? Um, I know that this is from me because I had the shipping and oh wow, it's got a pull tab. This is freaking sick. But I wanted to open it with you. Ah, so satisfying. Hulking out. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Oh, stunning. Oh, it's from Target? I got it from like thrift books. Ew. Uh, that's, you know, we're going to have to use Goo Gone. But I got the paperback of Temper by Lainey Fargo. Look at how stunning it is. It's so beautiful. God damn. Also, it feels amazing. It's that like matte spelt. Oh, the chapters are short. We love to see it. But um, I love this book. I gave it five stars. Planning on reading it in the future. So I got that. And then let's see. Oh, yes. I gave this five stars. I love this cover so much. My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This is in stunning condition. Good Lord. Does it have something under the dust jacket? It has a butterfly. I didn't see that coming. Uh, oh, well, actually, I should have because there's one in the fucking cover. Uh, this is such an amazingly written book. Like, it is absolutely stunning. This is stunning. Like, I might put this facing out on my bookshelf because not only is it, like, one of those well-written books I've ever read, but the cover is fucking gorgeous. And then, oh, this one feels good, too. Okay, The Last House on Needless Street by Katriana Ward. I, when I read this, um, which I'm going to read it again, the first time I read it, my jaw was on the fucking floor. That plot twist... Catch her an award. She, she had me. She had me, bitch. And this is my favorite color. Also, this cover is fucking stunning. We, oh my God. Okay, the last book I got, five stars. Five stars. Slewfoot by Brob. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. A Tale of Bewitchery. Oh no. It's kind of dented, but listen, that's what happens when you get thrifted books. Um, other than that, like, I mean, the cover is kind of fucked up, but like, we really can't tell. Stunning! Abatha is that bitch. Look how beautiful this is. God damn. This looks like an art book. <gasps> oh my god. It's so beautiful. Jordaline was totally right when she was like, yeah, I know the audiobook is great, but you have to get the physical book. Because look at this illustration. That's my girl, Abatha. That is my girl, Abatha. These are my boo-boos. My babies. Are they, are they hideous? Yeah. Would I die for them? <laughs> yes. 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 We have Forest, our little creepy ass opossum. And then we have Creek, this creepy ass fish. And then where's our boo? <gasps> Sky. Look at him. Samson, demon daddy. Is there another one? Ooh, <gasps> Mamuma Fett. Oh my god, as terrifying as I imagined. As fucking terrifying as I imagined. And Slewfoot. Which I think that Slewfoot, it's like, uh, just like a myth instead of actually being a real thing. And then the witch. Abatha. Oh my god. This is so fucking stunning. God damn. I'm blown away. I am blown away. Oh my god, does each chapter start with a different illustration? Bitch, jump on this shit jump on this book it's so good and there's a part in it where she sings a song and it is so stunning in the audiobook it's beautiful if it is a devil you seek then it is a devil you shall have connecticut 1666 oh i didn't even catch that that it was 666 ah! okay i'm having a fucking great time these books Stunning. Stunning! Oh my god, I did myself so right. Like, this was like a little pre-birthday haul, you know? Um, 
planning on getting more, but those are books that I have read in the last like month and a half that I gave five stars to that I wanted to own physically so I could reread in the future. So thanks for indulging with me. And now I have to go to my stupid job. Okay, I picked up this book on reading sprints with Gabby and I got to page 76, which is pretty damn good. Like these chapters are insanely long. I'm only on chapter two. Like <laughs> the fuck? Or yeah, yeah, chapter two. I'm only on chapter two. Like what, what is even happening? Why do authors make chapters this long? And the next chapter isn't for like another 30 pages. This is but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. Um, someone on the sprints said that this is YA horror and it's not really reading YA. Like if this is YA, it's damn good YA. Now, one thing I will say, let me flip you around. Um, let me take this off. One thing I will say is that I'm really confused on like what time this is set in because the way they speak is very like ye olden days. Like it feels like very, um, old Scotland or something but then like they have newspapers and police officers and hospitals so I'm like what what I'm confused I don't understand um and but then also all the lore and traditions feels very medieval like or not medieval but like Victorian you know so that's also kind of throwing me for a loop and another thing throwing me for a loop is that these kids all went missing when they were five and six years old. And then they come back miraculously, mysteriously, 12 years later. So they're like 18 years old. And they speak like 18 year olds. They have full vocabulary. Um, they don't remember anything, but they have full vocabulary. And I'm like, if you were disappeared when you were a kindergartner and you came back when you're 18 with no memories, why are you so literate? Like... I mean, I'm sure, I'm, I'm hoping that will be explained, like, that maybe, like, they were living in some alternate dimension or something. I'm, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck was going on. They were somewhere, and then maybe they got, like, drugged, like, and then put back in the town, and, like, that's why they don't remember anything, but, like, they actually are fully formed adults. I don't know, um, but I am enjoying it. I can't really explain why I'm enjoying it, only because it is very rare for me to be physically reading like this much in one day and I don't feel like fatigued by it like I am enjoying it I like it I want to see where the story's going um I'm not saying that it's necessarily reading like a five star but I mean it, it could turn out to be but I just think that there are certain things that maybe perhaps because it's translated are making it like not read necessarily like a five star, but it's reading like a damn good time so far. I'm only 76 pages in to a freaking gigantic book, but I'm enjoying it. Oh, oh wait. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Oh my God. I was, I was about to breeze right by. Uh, I started November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I got the audiobook on Libby and Gabby, this was a book that Gabby had given five stars. And then when she reread it last year or this year, she gave it two stars. And I was like, okay. And I know that Colleen Hoover is like, I don't know, like some of her books, people like they love it or they hate it. And like, I've liked everything that I've read from her. I've DNF'd two books of hers before, but I'm planning on going back and reading them. But I really enjoyed It Ends With Us, Verity. I liked Layla. I thought it was good. Um, so I've had success with her in the past, but those are like her like offshoot books, not just like purely romance. So November 9 is about this girl and this boy that the day before she's moving to New York City, she meets him and she's got like scars on her face. 
and she's in an argument with her dad and this boy comes up and pretends to be her boyfriend and the dad's like kind of like making fun of her or like b degrading her for the way she looks and the boy is like she's beautiful I don't know what you're talking about and they have this like kind of whirlwind like everything everything like if you've read that book like they kind of have like that kind of romantic half day and they're really into each other but she wants to focus on her acting career and she's like I can't focus on being in a relationship so I'm not going to give you my number and he's like okay well don't give me your number meet me back here on November 9th next year and she's like that's insane okay and but then they do end up meeting up and then when they meet up it's like okay well meet me at this spot next year on November 9th so it's supposed to be like they just see each other one day a year and I'm not gonna lie to you I am really enjoying it I am really enjoying it. Like, yeah, there are definitely some YA, a little bit cringy things, but like not even barely as much as I thought that there would be. And maybe it's because I went in with my expectation being low, but like, I like it. I'm surprised. It's such a fast book. Like I'm listening to it at 2.5 and it's like not that fast. And I never listen to books at 2.5. So I'm shook, but I'm super far into that book. I think I'm like 50%. I've, I mean, it's already like 10 30 PM. So obviously I, haven't um, updated you a whole bunch today, but that is where I am in those books. I'm really enjoying it. I do work the rest of the week. Whew. So we'll see how much I, I'm going to get more reading done tonight, like quite a bit more reading done tonight. I don't know if I'm going to update you again tonight, but if I don't, good night. Hey, what's up? It is a time we're not going to talk about. It's, uh, you know, we're going to say the same day because I haven't gone to sleep. Um, I had said goodnight before. Psych. I have gotten, let's see, a freaking chunk of this book read. I'm on like a, page 110 or something. I swear, I need to read the next 10 pages to get to the next chapter because this chapter was like 70 pages. Or something. It, it was something absurd. But um, I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. I, you know, listen. It's a long book. The part, part of me is thinking, is this book good or am I just in love with reading right now? That I just realized that. I was like, am I just in love with reading today? Like, I just genuinely have read 110 pages of a physical book that has a shit ton of writing on each page. What am I doing? What? Like, who? I read um, notes on an execution, like, almost in its, like, not in its entirety, but, like, 50% of it today, like, also physically reading it along with it. And then now I'm 75% of the way through November 9. And excuse, excuse me, Colin Hoover. What the, what the fuck did you just say? What did you just say? What, what did you just say? I did not in my little brain, in my little brain, believe that that is what was just going to come out of your mouth. I did not see that coming. How did I see that coming? Not in my wildest dreams, bitch. Taylor Swift could not write what? Could not write that plot twist. I'm confused. Um, I okay, listen, here's the thing. It's gonna depend on this plot twist because I am genuinely enjoying this book and I am a little bit confused on like why when people are rereading it, they're thinking it's so problematic. Because I don't think that it's problematic. Like there are vaguely like light problematic things, but vastly low compared to other like romance books that I have read or have heard of you know so I'm not really understanding but this plot twist that happened at the 75% mark sketch what do you mean did he I okay here's the thing if it was just a random thing here okay here's the thing I'm not gonna spoil it but if you know you know if you know you know if it was a random occurrence 
from his past and he did not know it would affect this other girl or whatever. And then because of that, he was like following, I don't want it to be a stalking situation, but if he was like following her life story because he felt guilty, I will be okay with that. But if it's literally anything else, I'm not okay with it. I'm not okay with it, but okay. I don't know. I want to finish this book tonight, but I don't know if that's, I'm saying I don't know if it's possible. It's definitely possible. <laughs> but should I do it? Obviously, no. Will I do it? <laughs> like, probably 100% yes. Hi, it is Thursday. I did completely, well, not forget, but just didn't update you yesterday for Wednesday, but I did show you a little um, time lapse of me setting up and breaking down a party that I did yesterday. And while I was doing that party, I did read a little bit more of I Shall Awaken. And I also convinced Kayla to read this book because she's doing a reading vlog where she reads funny books. And I was like, hello. And I want to know what she thinks about it. And she bought it. So she's going to read it for that video. Hilarious. Um, so I'm on page 170. I'm still really enjoying it. I like it. It is still thankfully not reading like YA. Like this is reading like an adult book that just happens to be about like 18 year olds. I mean, it's not like adult, like, oh my God, it's so adult. Ah, it's just like a normal story. Like it's just general fiction. It doesn't feel YA. It doesn't feel adult. It just feels you know, basic. I mean, not basic. It's good. You, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not making sense. I have to go to work in like a couple minutes. Am I wearing my um, shining t-shirt? Yes. I'm going to wear this while I'm setting up, but I am working with somebody else today, so I probably won't be able to film or read because he's a chatty Kathy. Um, love him, but he's a chatty Kathy. But I started and finished Flock by, I think it's Kate Stewart. And that was a book that I had got on the Audible sale because I just recognized it and it's like an erotic romance. And when I tell you this book's terrible, when I tell you this book is terrible, when I tell you I was listening to it at three times the speed because I just wanted it to be fucking over, I did not like it at all, but I had to finish it because the names of the characters are all people that I work with except Dominic. Dominic was the only person that I was like, no, but Cece, Layla, Christy, Sean, um, Tyler are all people that I work with. And I was like, that is fucking hilarious. Hysterical. So had to finish it. It is, listen, it's just terrible. And it's like, there's only two different kinds of, ro of erotic fiction. Okay. There is the erotic fiction where you're like, it's the toxicity where you're like, I'm going to call the police on site. And then there's a the toxicity where you're like, okay, come in really quick. I'll call the police. I'll call the police afterward. Come in. Okay, this was the on-site toxicity. Disgusting! When he, in the very beginning, when he like breaks her Apple Watch because he's like a hippie and he's like, you don't need that. You don't need to be a slave to time. I was like, on-site, ew! And then also the fact that like, uh, they all were gonna share her, but then she was like, they can't sleep with anybody else but me. No. Also, she was 18? vile anyway read that hated it two stars and then also let's talk about something else i'm hating book of night by holly black it's so there's way too many words on each page let's talk about that real quick like it looks short way too many damn words okay but i'm on chapter seven and that is page 56 and i want to dnf this book i wanted to dnf it in the prologue i'm not even shitting you and then in chapter one i was like this is a hard dnf this is holly black's first adult book bitch where Bitch, where? This is YA. This is like... 
a grievously, grievously YA. It is so YA. And I also really don't like the fact that like, so her sister reads tarot cards and then she like lies about um, being able to see the future or whatever. But there's magic in this book. There's like shadow magic. So why is it that if magic actually exists in this world, that she looks at tarot cards and like reading the future and tea leaves and stuff as being like utterly fake. She's like shit talking it. She's like, everybody knows that that isn't even real and that we're just like scamming people for money and that anybody who reads tarot cards is scamming people for money and for whatever. And I was like, but, but magic is actually real. I don't know. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit about, you know, no. DNF. DNF. Not good. Hated it. <laughs> I'm going to give it two stars. I only got 56 pages in. That was enough. It was enough in the first chapter. It was enough. Okay, I literally have one minute before I have to get to work. But um, that is going to be a hard no. I'll pick something else up on audio today, but I don't know what I'm going to pick up. But I'll hit you back up later. Oh my god, hi! It is 12.30 on the same day. I haven't taken my makeup off. Obviously, I really need to do that. I really need to take my makeup off. Anyway, um, what have we done today? We DNF'd The Book of Night by Holly Black. This is bad. Like, I know I didn't like The Cruel Prince, but I'm like, at least, I mean, <laughs> I didn't like it, but I'm like, at least The Cruel Prince, like, I knew what I was getting into. In this, it's supposed to be adult, and I was like, this is less adult than The Cruel Prince. This book is just, it is just bad. It's not that it's not for me. This is not a good book. It's not good. Sorry, I'm sure Holly Black is an amazing person. But anyway, um, I got to page 192 of I Shall Awaken. So I've read, I was on page 170. So I've read like 22 pages of this today. I'm still enjoying it. I like it. Cool, bet. Got it. And then I started listening to the audiobook for The Butterfly Garden, and I'm on page 72, and what the fuck? Like, I did not read the summary. I have no idea what this book is about or where it's going, but like, what the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, all I know so far, um, I seriously, like, if I'd read the summary, I'm sure I wouldn't be acting like this, but... Um, I'm kind of glad I didn't read the summary. I haven't even, I haven't read the back of the book. I'm like, don't do it. Um, okay, so you're following. It's basically like these like detectives that are questioning this girl, Mia, or Maya. Maya, yeah. Um, questioning this girl, Maya. And apparently um, these girls have just been found. And like some of them are dead. Some of them are not. And basically like they were kept in this place called the garden by the gardener. And he kidnaps girls that are like, above 16 but under 21 and then he tattoos on their backs butterflies like different butterflies for each one of them and they all have to wear like um kind of like nightgowns where like they're covered in the front but not in the back so that he can see the butterflies and they all are a different butterfly based on like their personality I guess and he renames them and like keeps them and it's like a guy this older guy and his son but the son is like a piece of shit. I mean obviously both of them are pieces of shit but the son Ew. 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 And, um, when they turn, let, no, I, okay, I'm not going to tell you what happens about that, but it's like, they're talking to Maya and she's not giving them anything. She's like, I mean, why do you want to know? Who cares? Like, you can figure out what my name was. And you're trying to figure out, like, why she's holding all of these secrets back, which I still don't know. I'm still like, Maya, why won't you just speak the fuck up? Like, this is the police. I don't know. I have no idea. And they're trying to piece it together. We're trying to piece it together. I don't know what's happening. But when I tell you, I'm, like, freaked out. Like, this book is, like... There's just... There are things that this man has done that it's, like... It's that weird overlapping of, like, aesthetic beauty and horror. Like, what he's doing for aesthetic beauty is horrifying. It's horrifying. It is so scary. Like, what the fuck? So I'm really digging it. I'm. It's not a long book, and I'm not that far in. I'm on page 72, and there are like 276 pages. I'm really digging it, and all it says is beauty has never looked so terrifying. That's a great way to put it. So I'm really enjoying it. I'm going to wrap it up for tonight, even though I... I'm either going to continue listening to the audiobook, or I'm going to continue watching the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trial and uh, dead ass if there's anybody out there on the internet watching this and you you support amber heard you can just go ahead and unsubscribe 
I don't need that kind of negativity on Beyonce's internet. I don't need it. Okay, anyway, good night. You guys, I am not shitting you when I say that it is Saturday at like 10 p.m. And I was not working today, but I did not update you on a single goddamn thing. I started to update you earlier in the day and then Grace called me like halfway through the clip and I was like, screw the clip. Hey, bestie, what's up, girl? So, and then proceeded to completely forget because literally what I was doing, I can tell you what comprised my entire day. One, reading a copious amount of Donna and Harvey fan fiction from the show Suits. I know I won't shut up about it. I know I won't shut up about it, but I'm going to keep talking about it until my fellow brethren, the Darvey fans, will come to me. I'll put a whole thread on Discord about it, bitch. Bet me that I won't. Dare me. Double dog dare me. I'll do it. Y'all don't even got to say shit. Literally nobody could care and I'll still do it. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Please, God, if you have a book ship that reminds you of them, I don't care if they're side characters. I don't care if they're back burner characters. Let a bitch know because I'm literally obsessed. I'm literally so obsessed. Okay. Anyway, everything else I've been doing today is filming my wrap up and filming my TBR for this next month. But oh my God. Okay. So in sad news, my book of the month box got stolen from my doorstep. And I mean, that just, that really sucks. Like I knew it was gonna happen eventually because I've had packages stolen before, but no one has ever stolen a book of the month box because like it's books. Like usually thieves aren't looking for that kind of shit. Anyway, they stole it. I'm very upset about it. So I've been trying to contact uh, book of the month, which, you know, it's a Saturday. They're not like in the office, they're not working, but I was trying to contact them to be like, I'm so sorry. Like I, I can't film the normal content. Like, what do you want me to do? I, you know, that's not their fault that my package got stolen and I don't want them to have to send me another one. Cause like that's money. And like those books, like, you know, they don't need to do that. I don't, I don't expect them to do that. So I'm trying to find a way around that. And obviously since it's Saturday and I'm filming today, like they haven't gotten back to me and I don't think they will tomorrow either. Cause it's Sunday, but like, I want to get the video up on like Tuesday for the TBR. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, I'm willing to do anything. Like they're so nice. Like, the, like every time I talk about book of the month, um, this video isn't sponsored obviously, but every time I talk about book of the month, I like genuinely think they're really nice people. Like they're really nice. They're so sweet. They're so accommodating. They're gracious. Like they're cool women. Every person I've talked to that works there has been women. We fucking love to see it. For starters, we love to see it. And like, they genuinely watch the booktube community. Like they watch videos. They're cool. Anyway, whatever. I just want to do right by them because they always do right by me. But let me tell you about what we have been reading. I don't think I told you that I even started this book. I started it on like Thursday night or something. I don't think I even told you that. If I didn't, I'm so sorry. But I started this book. I finished it today. What the fuck? It's, it's, uh, who it's horrifying. This book is unsettling. It was so good. I gave it five fucking stars. I loved this book. I loved it. It was like beautifully creepy. I just unsettling, terrifying. Anyway, whew, what am I going to do? It's 10 PM. I guess I should like make some food. I guess I'll make a margarita. Continue reading that book. I honestly don't know. I'll probably just read fan fiction. Fucking fuck. I'm embarrassing myself. Okay. Anyway, um, bye. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's a while later. I don't even remember what the last day I talked to you on. I think it was like Friday, maybe. I don't know. It's Tuesday now. <laughs> it's Tuesday now. It's a whole other week. And when I tell you, the only book that I, I've not gotten any farther into um, I Shall Awaken, but I did reread uh, The Last House on Needless Street. Loved it. Loved this cover so freaking much. I reread this, but let me tell you, that's all I've done because I caved. I caved and I started actually watching Suits. <laughs> it's free on Peacock. Peacock is free. I didn't know. I had no idea. I'm so happy. I've literally watched almost an entire two seasons today. I'm like, well, not today, but like, I'm, I'm like, I think around the middle of season two before I was just watching their clips on YouTube, but now I'm watching all of it and consecutive. It's so good. It's so good. Like I know. Do you think I'm annoying when I'm talking about this show? 
Like, I know I'm annoying. I'm annoying myself. But I'm a fangirl. I'm a fangirl. I am verklempt. But yeah, I'm going to close this vlog out because right now as I'm editing it, it's 59 minutes long. Edited. It's 59 minutes long. So thank you for coming to my feature film. Um, I am about to do the live show for Notes on Execution and Cursed Bunny in like an hour. So that'll be exciting. If you have gotten this far into the video, um, one, thank you. <laughs> thank you. But leave the cat. In, is there a black cat? If there's not, just leave a cat for the cat, Olivia, from The Last House on Dealer Street. Um, leave the cat emoji if you've gotten this far. If you, uh, well, listen, we're not even going to do the classic outro. Like the whole shish kebab. Like you already know. You can follow the things you want to follow. You can subscribe if you want to subscribe. But da 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 I've got to go back to watching Suits because I only have time to watch one more episode. And Donna got fired. <laughs> I, need, I need to see her get brought back. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, I'm like, do I just need to skip until she comes back? Because... But no, I can't because I need to see Harvey pining for her and being broken without her. I'm going to stop. I'm literally so annoying. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. Thank you so much for joining. Have an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever you're having right now. And I will see you in a video coming. Well, not so soon because all I'm going to be doing is watching this show and not reading anything. But um, anyway, bye.